just tell us about the technology you're working on, which seems to be a step beyond green screens. Sure. So it's um, and you introduce it uh, well. You know, it's it's this adoption of virtual uh, production technology, which really you want to really think about as digital transformation, which of course is going on in a wide variety of industries, but happening there right there in the film and the TV industry. And it really is about you know, if you think 80 years ago when they were making a film like Gone with the Wind, where they had uh, they had to build real sets made of real materials, and there were real actors and real costumes and real lights and, and so forth. And when they wanted to do a real uh, special effect, they set fire, you know, to the actual set itself. Well, all of those things that were real now are possible uh, and can be achieved in the digital and the virtual, and hence the term virtual uh, production. So now you can have virtual sets, you can have virtual actors, you can have virtual lights, uh, you can even have virtual uh, uh, visual effects. And that change, that shift from the real uh, to the to the virtual or to the, to the digital, yes, it's been going on for 25 years, but during uh, the pandemic where you can't get have large numbers of people on set, where you can't have uh, close proximity with those people on set, actually there's been a massive adoption going on of, of those virtual uh, of those virtual production techniques. And you mentioned a couple of the, those shows that are really uh, pioneering that. Man, I've just finished watching uh, Mandalorian uh, 2, uh, season two, which is, is a great, great show. And the techniques they've, they've pioneered there, Industrial Light and Magic, have just been uh, tremendous. Anyone sitting in front of a streaming service knows that content has been hit. There's not a lot of new production to, to watch at this point, which means there's a catch up at some stage. What does that mean in terms of the life cycle for some of this virtual technology? Because it seems like it may be very much in demand or the studios have bank some of that content. But then longer term, some of the realism that we're talking about might be the trend that comes back. How do you, you play the cycle and what are you thinking about for the short and longer term? I think, I mean, that's definitely true that we've all been spending these periods of lockdown um, watching, you know, large numbers of shows that are available on those streaming platforms. And I'm sure you, just like me, seems to have, you know, a wide variety of those uh, streaming services. And what that really has meant, though, is that those production firms now have brought forward some of their plans. They can have a confidence that there is the demand there because, you know, we are gra gradually getting towards the, you know, the bottom of, uh, of, those, uh, of those platforms content. And by bringing those plans uh, forward, that means they are adopting those uh, virtual uh, production uh, techniques. And remember, virtual production enables you to, because you, you can have all of these uh, virtual set environments and, and, and other virtual uh, elements, it actually means that you can uh, shorten some of the life cycle of the production techniques and also have a, a, a richer uh, production so you can have a wider variety of sets and again if you look at Mando Mandalorian 2 um, you can see the, the the number of changes they have within that environment is much greater than you would have had say in a in a physical uh, uh, show or one where you had to rely on you know the building construction of more sets so um, yes I think uh, you know, we've we've seen an awful lot of content, but for me, I'm only seeing uh, more, you know, increasing efforts to produce yet more more content from those pioneers in the streaming realm, uh, as well as in a more traditional broadcast. Uh, Nick, the pandemic risks uh, structurally reshaping how this industry operates permanently, and I'm focused primarily on where we go with cinemas and theatres. Do you think it was the right decision for Warner Brothers? to move forward with its releases not through theatres. Um, in a way, they've just reinforced the pain, haven't they, for, for many of these, many of them, which are small businesses. Well, I think that's a hard, hard for me to make a comment on because clearly I'm not sitting there with all the data that the, uh, the Warner Brothers executives uh, are sitting on. And I think what we can all recognise is that we've all been consuming um, uh, content you know great film and tv uh, content through an even through a wide variety of different um uh, channels for, for many years already so we you know we, we watch a uh, we can watch a show on our phone we can watch a show on a set top box we can watch a show on our pc and we can watch it you know uh, in the cinema just as well and for me personally you know someone who is passionate about uh, film and tv uh, production who grew up with that world of the big cinema event i think there's still absolutely a place uh, for that and I, I see a lot of innovation going on, you know, within within that realm. You know, another area we're involved with is is, is a form of location-based entertainment called uh, location-based VR, where you go and engage in a in a in a room space, free roaming VR experience, so that uh, which can then extend the experience of the content in the cinema, actually, and so you actually start to live the movie. So you might go and see uh, the next Harry Potter movie, but then actually also go and have 15 minutes uh, casting spells and. Uh, and uh, and exploring the, the the worlds of those dangerous beasts.